Howdy, this is Mackenzie Franklin from Side Game LLC here in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Today we're going to be organizing Guards of Atlantis 2, designed by RTM Nichiparov and published by Wolf Designer. This is a fully sleeve, fully expanded copy of Guards of Atlantis 2 with no lid lift that's organized to get gameplay started as soon as possible, as well as facilitate the game while it's being played. If you have any questions about anything that you see here, please let me know down in the comments of the video, and for links to everything that I talk about in this video, please take a look in the description. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please make sure that you do, it is the best way to help us grow, and for those of you already subscribed, thank you so much for the continuous support. Let's get started organizing Guards of Atlantis 2. Before we begin, I want to quickly talk about the playmats for the game. We store ours in these architect tubes here. They've got this great cap that you just simply unscrew, and then you're able to pull out all of your different playmats. You're able to store the two available playmats for the game currently in a single architect tube. Super useful. In addition, you're able to affix the artwork for the game on the top here, so you can easily differentiate it from your other large games with these awesome playmats. It's also extendable on the sides here. I love using these architect tubes for all of our different games. So that's our mats for Guards of Atlantis 2. Let's lift off the lid and inside you'll see we have the rule books on top. There's two separate rule books for the game. One's your rules of play, which is going to have all your basic instructions, your setup, etc., and then have a great reference and a summary for the game on the back. And then the next booklet is your Tome of Mastery, which is going to have all of your different expansion module explanations, how to draft your different characters, how to play that full game, as well as the different icons on Hero Selection, and all these different optional modules, as well as game modes that you can play with as well. You also have some achievements in the back there, lots of ways to tackle your game of Guards of Atlantis 2. Underneath your rule books, you'll have your game board. We use the play mats for pretty much all of our games, but the board does fit in here nicely. And if you're not feeling like lugging those large play mats, you can always play on this. It is double sided featuring the two different boards for the lower player account games and the higher player account games. It's also a little bit smaller than the play mat, so that's something to be aware of. If you are limited on table space, the board is a great option for you. Up next, we have your main game insert here. It's separated into two parts, and you'll just simply lift off this clear lid like so, and that'll detach from the bottom section. So let's take a look at this first portion here. On the top side of our plastic insert here, we have all of our dashboards for the game. First off, your minion dashboard here. This is to track the pushes that are going to be going on. It's also double-sided here for your larger player games with two different minion battles that are happening at the same time. You also have spaces for your mega minion cards here. Underneath the minion dashboards, you're going to have all of your hero dashboards. You've got all of your basic stats on the bottom here, your character's symbol, your discard pile, and an area to place your cards if they've been resolved, areas for your different items, as well as your level up track on the side. And on the back, you're going to have some information giving you some detail on who this character is, as well as some quick tips on how to play them, their miniature, and then the same information that will be on the hero profile card. This gives you a more in-detail look at all of the different abilities and traits. So these are all of the different hero dashboards. Make sure each player has one that matches the character that they want to be. In the bottom section of our clear insert here, we have some standard size cards. They don't have any lids or anything because the game board is going to keep them from moving around, so they're pretty safe down here on the bottom without any covers. Now's a great time to talk about the sleeves that we use for all of our standard size cards. We use the Ultra Pro Pro Mat Deck Protector sleeves for standard size. I love the way that they shuffle. They've got a great matte finish. These are my go-to brand of sleeves for all of my standard size cards. So that's Ultra Pro here for all of our standard size cards. In these three bottom sections here, we have our Hero Profile cards. They're marked based on the star complexity levels here on the upper right side. It shows you the name of the character and then all of the info that would be on the back. This is a great way for people to get a glance at what the different characters offer. So these are all of our one star complexity, and then we've got all of our two star complexity, and then all of our three star complexity here. Our next pile of cards here are our Mega Minion cards. These are going to give new abilities to the different types of minions, whether it be all of them, heavy, ranged, or specific to melee. We've got all of these different effects that can go on to the different minions. If you decide to play with this module, you'll choose two of them and then place one on each of these empty spaces. And then when this specific push happens, it's going to trigger the card above it. And the same thing with this push here. So your abilities are going to change as the game progresses. So that's everything inside of our clear plastic tray. Let's move on to the one underneath. Starting off with this top section here, you're going to have all of your minions for your miniatures, as well as two specific heroes. You'll have Brogan and Zargatha, and then your tower miniatures for the different teams, all based on this color scheme here. Starting from the left and going to the right, you'll have a variety of cards and tokens. Starting off with our tiebreaker token here, Underneath the tiebreaker token, you'll have two identical decks of relic cards. They're separated based on the team icon here, but they are going to be the same inside. They're going to give you different ways to level up, and instead of getting the item, the basic one, you can instead get one of these cool relic cards. So you'll have two of those that are identical for each team. 
Our last card well here has two different sets of cards. Starting off with your level cards, you'll put these on the side of your board to track your level. Make sure to give one to each player and do not store them with the different characters as there are not enough for each character to have their own level card. Store them all here and only pass them out at the start of each game. Next, you're gonna have underneath that your set of challenge cards. These are additional ways to gain gold during the game. You'll flip three of these at the start. They'll have some criteria and a way to get some extra gold and level up more quickly. Those are all of the challenge cards. Now's a great time to talk about the card sleeves that we use for our mini American sized cards. That's gonna be all of the cards in this insert here. We use the mini American game genic mat. Very similar to before, I like the mat finish as well as the way that these shuffle. These are my go-to for non-standard sized cards, particularly the mini American that you find in Guards of Atlantis 2. To the right of all of our cards, you have all of your wave counters. You're only gonna use enough of these to fill up this track here based on the map that you're playing, as well as the length of game you're playing. So go ahead and bring those out based on that player count and based on what map and mode that you're playing. In this last well, you'll have your colored bases for your miniatures. You simply affix them to the bottom of your miniatures like so, and it's easy to tell which character belongs to which team. And stored with the colored bases, you'll have the life counters for each team with their active and inactive sides. Go ahead and bring those out based on the player count. As you've probably noticed, we use coin capsules for all of our small cardboard tokens for this game. Our life counters, as well as our wave counters, and then all the different tokens for the different heroes. I love the way that they feel, as well as they give you a nice tactile sensation for the entire game, while also keeping all of the art and your tokens in general well protected. You're going to need two different sizes for your tokens here. Smaller size for the life and wave tokens, and then larger sizes for your different hero tokens. I'll leave a link in the description below for the specific sizes. In addition, if you are going to use the coin capsules, you'll often get these rough edges on them every so often. So I do recommend you take an X-Acto knife here and do some trimming to make sure that they're nice and smooth on all of the sides. That's an X-Acto knife. Once again, links in the description for everything that I talk about here. So that's everything in this bottom main tray. Let's go ahead and move it to the side. As you can see, we've gone ahead and redone our insert inside here, removing the original that had the lids where the cards were moving around, that was our main problem with it, and going for the burger token storage method here. So let's take a look at one of these boxes so you can get an idea of how we organize each of the different heroes. They are burger token boxes, the 80S sized, 80 sleeved, and they're going to fit perfectly all of your hero's cards, their tokens, as well as their miniature. You're actually going to trim the original inserts so you're keeping that protective coating, so that way if they do have any pieces or anything that would bend, you still have have that plastic that's going to keep them protected and the box actually serves as a lid so that nothing moves around. Let's pop off the lid here and take a look inside. As mentioned before, you're going to have all of the cards for each character in their box, and I like to put them in two separate stacks, that way that their art is facing each other, and that way you can clearly see the symbol of each character so it's easy to tell who is who. Now these first set of five cards are going to be your starter cards. You're going to have all of your cards with this Roman numeral one in the upper right corner, and then the two cards that have nothing in the upper right. So all together that's going to be your red, your blue, your green, your yellow, and your gray for each character. You'll then take all of the level up cards as well as the handicap card, and then slap them together, and that will be all of the different cards for a single hero. And as mentioned before, you'll have your miniature in its original protective casing here, just trimmed so that nothing is sharp on the sides here with a pair of scissors. And then lastly, all of your tokens stored in coin capsules here for that nice tactile feeling. We'll return everything to the box, simply putting your cards in first, and then your miniature like so, and then lastly, your tokens on top. And that's how every single hero is going to be stored here, like so. There's enough room for 24 heroes to stand vertically, like so, on this bottom row, but there are ways that you can readjust all of your boxes in here to make room for future expansions. In addition, I want to quickly talk about these two characters, Zargatha as well as Brogan. We do have their cards down here, but their miniature is in that original container with the rest of the minions, but we've kept them separate here so you can clearly be like, okay, those are for those characters, and their miniatures are easily available with the rest of the minions. Next up, we have a simple microfiber drawstring bag. I love taking the colored bases and putting them here, here, and then having players pick out a random token to determine which team that they're going to be on. I think it's a great way to make sure that everybody's randomly being assigned, and you can just throw it in here and decide to use it or not. The bags that we use are these microfiber drawstring bags from the BGG store. I love the way that they feel and how you can match them based on their color to the game that you're playing. Buried in this upper left corner here with a silica gel packet for freshness, we have all of your redundant coins. We've actually gone ahead and upgraded all of our original coins in the base game with some metal coins, and we'll talk about those in a second. If you want to store them in here, they do fit nicely and they keep things from shuffling around, but you definitely don't have to include these in your game. 
And that brings us to our last four items here, our containers storing our metal coins. These are the Game Trays containers from the BGG store. I love the way that they're separated into three different parts here for the different denominations of coins. And these coins in particular are the metal doubloon coins from Libertalia, the Winds of Galecrest. I think that these are the best metal coins on the market right now, just for something with low denominations, as well as being generally pretty, great heft, and an affordable price. I love these, and I like the fact that they don't have the name of any game splattered, but they fit sort of a sub nautical theme here with Guards of Atlantis 2. So these are the metal doubloon coins from Libertalia, the Winds of Galecrest, in the game trays containers from the BGG store. And one last thing on these containers, the reason we have so many is to put them onto the different sides of the table, particularly if you're playing in those large group games, so everybody has an area that they can pull their coins from. No one's reaching across the entire table just to grab from the coin pool. So I love having multiples of these trays so everybody can access them. And that is everything inside of Guards of Atlantis 2. Let's go ahead and pack it up. Let's start off in the upper left section with our silica gel packet with our redundant cardboard coins, followed by our containers of metal coins sliding into the left like so, so you do have room for all four of them here. If you've taken out any of your hero boxes, go ahead and slot them into that bottom section here. We'll cover up our main body with our minion tray like so. We'll return our relic cards as well as our tiebreaker token to this bottom well here, followed by our level up cards and our challenge cards in this center well. We'll then return our plastic cover for all of our miniatures as well as our tokens and small cards. We'll return our mega minion and our hero profile cards into the bottom section here. Next up are our hero and our minion dashboards in that top section. We'll cover that up with our main game board and finish up by putting our Tome of Mastery and our rulebook on top. And that is organizing Guards of Atlantis 2. If you have any questions about what you saw here, please let me know down in the comments below. And for links to everything that I talked about here, please take a look in the description of the video. How do you organize your copy of Guards of Atlantis 2? What's your favorite hero to play as? What's your favorite team composition? Which map do you prefer? Which expansion module is your favorite? We'd love to hear what you think. But thank you so much for watching. Side game strong.